Hey everyone, we are live for our Mastery Chat recap, which is one of my favorite things we get to do after Mastery Chat because we get to recap our conversation over on Twitter, highlight some amazing uh, people that share their answers. And hello, I'm with Hans Apple. Hans, this has been the week of Hans Apple. I think many have called it Hansa Palooza. How are you? I thought that was an official title. I thought we it were was. like, okay, I think oh, we're we're gonna okay. we're gonna go with that from now on. It's Hansa Palooza. Yes, it was Hansa Palooza from beginning to end. <laughs> I kind of feel like we're on the tail end of Hansa Palooza, which makes me very sad. Could you just do something awesome next week and we'll just continue it forward? I'll work on that. I think I will. Come on. <laughs> you just posted mastery chat and I wanna know how you're feeling. Uh that like that was awesome. I loved it. I think it was great. I, I I think it's the perfect time to be having these conversations with, you know, how are we gonna serve the whole child, especially as we sort of come back uh in the fall, whatever that new normal looks like. So I thought it was just the perfect conversation to have tonight. Well, it was so good. I want to talk about the topic. I want to talk about all the reasons why this was such a a great topic for you to share. But first and foremost, if people are just tuning in right now, maybe they swore off social media for the last two weeks. So they haven't seen anything that you've been involved in. Because I really believe that you've like truly taken over the world the past two weeks. But let's just pretend if they don't know all, you know, all that you do in education, tell us a little about yourself real quick. Yeah. So I'm Hans Apple, um, counselor at Enterprise Middle School in West Richland, Washington. So um, we're uh, dealing with sunshine today, so we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. But um, yeah, I'm the director of culture for the Teach Better team. I get to do speaking and podcasting. And the big news is I just wrote a book. So that actually came out about a week ago. It's called Award Winning Culture. And it's very much about the topic that we spoke about and chatted about tonight. So it's perfect timing. Thanks. I just say, Hans, I know that we were celebrating. We did a whole week to celebrate your book. It came out just last week, which just seems so long ago. It was a huge moment. But today is when I started seeing all the social media posts of people receiving their book where they ordered it from Amazon and it like took a few days to ship. And there were so many pictures on my newsfeed today. It's exciting. Although, you know what? I don't even have my copy yet. So it's kind of crazy. Like people are seeing it, they're getting it. And I'm like, oh, I'm so jealous. I want to get my copy. <laughs> How is that possible? We got to get you your copy. <laughs> now. I know. Oh, well, it's we will get yours soon. But I did see many people, <laughs> even those of you that are with us right now, a lot of people, I think Adam was one I saw, and Becky posted that they had the book and they were like, taking their selfie with your awesome book. So um, awesome. it's just exciting to see because we had so much great discussion and I think it was perfect you hosting Mastery Chat the week after it came out because this really was not only a relevant topic to our family because we're so happy about your new book, but also so timely in education. It matters right now, doesn't it? I mean, most schools are either finished or finishing up and now we're starting to sort of plan into next year and what that's going to look like. And I think all of this is kind of, I don't know, maybe resurfaced that that need that we all knew was there, but it sort of reminded us that this work on the whole child, like it matters, right? It's just huge. Well, so tell us, obviously the the topic that we discussed today in Master Chat had to do with the book, but what was the overarching topic? What did we uh, focus on if, if, if people are listening right now and they weren't able to join the chat yet? So really it's, it's about reimagining our schools to reach the whole child. So, you know, that's, that's such a big, broad picture. You know, we're talking SEL, we're talking character development, but we're also talking, how do we get to a place of student empowerment? So right. I really, I really liked one of the questions that we tied in with the grid method and teach further, which a lot of times people think in terms of it's either you serve the whole child or you focus on your content. And I saw some people that were, um, chatting about that tonight, that it's it really needs to be a blend of the two, doesn't it? It totally does. And I've actually always very much appreciated your mindset in this area because I see a lot of people pushing out SEL and whole child resources, but they're truly done in isolation. And something I very quickly began to admire about the work that you do, the work that you do to support other educators is this blended model where we're not just walking into classrooms and right now I'm a math teacher and then right now I'm teaching social emotional skills, but how can I really blend this in not only to my classroom, but to the entire experience of learning, 
which you've done so wonderfully. And you just wrote a book literally so other people can duplicate. <laughs> it's perfect timing, right? It's good timing. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think I think you're right. And and you know, like the ASCD, they they kind of have these, you know, big topics when they think about the whole child. And I think, you know, we think about supportive and safe and healthy and all these things kind of like naturally fit within that whole child. But some of those other topics are engaged and challenged. And that's where you still have to have that content that that kind of, you know, is kind of hand in hand, I guess, with all the other work that's supporting the kids. So I think that's crucial. And I think, you know, like what you're doing with teach further and what, what we're doing with the grid method with the teach better team really just fits perfectly with the whole child. It's really not, I do this or that it's let's put these in together. Well, and that's true. And I saw that echoed through so many different answers. I do want to kind of like pinpoint a few questions you asked. We can talk more in depth, but specifically when you were bringing up, you know, the grid method and teach further model, which often doesn't come up in mastery chat because, you know, the teach better team does a lot of stuff. And sometimes, you know, what we do training on doesn't necessarily come up in a conversation that we're having over on Twitter. But today specifically, I mean, whether you're using the grid method or a different mastery framework, or you're using the teach further model or a different interdisciplinary lesson planning design, it doesn't matter. But how can you have those elements, those attributes and blend them in? And I think that was echoed throughout all the educators, the hundreds and hundreds of educators that joined that chat, because I think this value of finding a way to create it, uh, to, to like build these skills in all day was echoed from everyone. Well, and here's the other thing, right? I mean, kids are gonna be coming back, whether we're coming to some hybrid model, whether it's still distance learning or whether students are gonna be back full in their classes, we're all going to be at different levels and we're all going to be, you know, dealing with this in, in various ways. I mean, not every kid's situation has looked the same, which is obvious, but it also means education coming back in the fall can't look the same. I, I really believe traditional education needs to go away. Like, I don't, I don't see how that can coexist with what just happened for the last six months with coronavirus. Right. No, I think it's, you're it's right. A different game. Yeah. Do you think there's some key pieces teachers need to keep in mind as they walk into August? I think, you know, it starts with student voice. I think, you know, I hear a lot of teachers that are like starting to have like plans and ideas and all of these things. And I really think we need to kind of find out where our kids are. And, you know, that may be, you know, over the summer, that may be, you know, right when school is starting again, up again. But I think we need to take the temperature and the pulse and and see where is everybody, what do people need, um, and you know what do they think would help them moving forward. I, I just think about you know all the students that right now are doing distance learning and they're essentially doing flexible seating, for instance. Right. So they're working from wherever they want to work in their own home. Mm -hmm. And now are we going to ask them to come back and sit in a very traditional seat and pay attention and you know? we're going to have a lecture style. That's just not going to work. I mean, that, that is going to be such a brutal, you know, hill to climb, so to speak. And I saw a lot of pieces of what you just said right now, a constant conversation throughout the entire chat. I mean, you asked numerous questions over the course of a full hour. If anybody listening right now didn't get to catch the chat, you can go to Twitter, search hashtag mastery chat, and you can see the entire conversation in its entirety. Uh, but there was a lot of questions digging in at these concepts. Was there one question maybe that you knew you were going to ask, but you were excited to see the responses for? Maybe you knew it was going to spark a nerve or kind of force educators to question a little bit more than they were, you know, already? I don't know if it, I would say spark a nerve, but I, the question about the legacy question, as far as like thinking about a student that you really connected with and what was it, I think that's really a, a healthy exercise in, in, in reflection as far as, um, you know, sometimes we're, we, we just kind of talk in general, like, hey, I had a good relationship with that kid or we seem to connect, but really digging in and thinking specifically about what is it I did and said mm -hmm. with this student in this situation that I can now replicate with other you know, students. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I, I reflected on a kid that I really just spent a lot of time listening. Mm -hmm. And you know, that really kind of made a, a connection that, um, really changed this whole world. Uh, and I, I write about it in the book, but uh, it was, you know, pretty powerful for me to kind of reflect on, okay, 
there's definitely those times that it gets hard to listen or it gets hard to, you know, show that patience when we want to move forward and we want to, you know, get our things done. Right. But um, I think sometimes when we focus on those success stories, then we can replicate that in the future. You know, that's always, I always appreciate this about you. And I saw it in the chat and I hear it in your answer right now, where it's not just about celebrating that we've had those moments, right? It's not about everyone sharing, you know, tell the amazing story about how you changed a child's life, which is a lot of educators reason why they go into education, right? Those (laughs) those amazing stories. And I mean, I love that you took that and said, yes. Okay. So remember that moment, but then how do we duplicate it? Because if it's only going to be for that one kid every 10 years, that's (laughs) wonderful. But can we take this idea and make it 10 kids every year simply by finding the values in those stories? That's powerful, Hans. Right. Yeah, I know. I think, I think you're right. And I think, you know, reflection is really, I I think a huge part of what we need to be doing in education. I think, you know, when we go on uh, a podcast or when we write a blog or when we, you know, sit in a a PLN or PLC, you know, and, and just interact and and talk shop, I think that's such a powerful thing. And it's got to go beyond just, um, you know, the, the patting ourselves and each other on the back, but really digging in on the specifics about wh- what's working or what's not working. Do you think that you maybe you saw it in the chat or maybe just reflecting? I know there's so much good, so many good examples of a lot of these pieces right now in the book, but um, do you have anything specifically that you've heard teachers reflecting on that these were impactful elements of their legacy with this child? So they're able to take that and use that for other students that they interact with as well? Well, today I actually, I saw the coolest thing. A a friend of mine who's a SEL teacher in New York, she sent me, um, it's like a reflection room that she's created. And there's a lot of these regulation reflection rooms um, kind of going on around schools, but she's actually created a virtual one. And she was talking about the impact that that's had with some students. And it was just so cool. It was like, okay, you've taken this really great concept. You know, this is, this is great, you know, education, great culture stuff, but now you've applied it to this distance learning. And now, you know, you're able to reflect on, okay, here's a student that it's actually helped with. So I don't know, that just really inspired me. It kind of had nothing to do with the chat tonight, but it's something that's been on my mind since I saw it. Well, it's so interesting. I I think that all of us are trying to find ways to bring in those experiences that we had in our classrooms and find ways to implement them remotely. And you're right, those restorative rooms, or I mean, they're, they're, every school calls them something different, but I hadn't thought of the the need of that, but how powerful it is. It's something that we felt like we needed in our school building. So why should it not be offered in some sort of virtual setting? That's very interesting to think about. That opens up a whole new oh, yeah. set of doors that I feel like I almost need to like walk throughout my building and be like, what other spaces exist that I maybe I'm not offering my students right now. Ray, and you would have loved this because um, one, it, you know, there's all these components as far as like, you know, here's a place where you can practice some breathing and some mindfulness and just really cool things. But one of the things that they had was they had a virtual puppy cam where you could oh. like actually like go in and you're, you're a child at home doing distance learning and you're kind of feeling stressed out and you can go in and actually like watch puppies and, and sort of interact with them on a virtual level. And I was just like, ah, you're one of the first people I thought of when I saw it. I was like, That's so cool. <laughs> but you're right. It's so funny. These experiences that you would normally be able to offer. I mean, I'm okay. So this is obviously, we haven't talked about this before. I know we're off from the chat. We'll get back to it. But, you know, even on days where you can kind of feel like either something's going on in the building or there's a lot of stress in the room. Like I change my mini lesson. We turn on a fireplace on the smart board, turn down the light. Love that. And we all have like a, you know, a few minutes of quiet, deep breathing, like offering that as an outlet to students to say, you know, if this was an experience that I would normally adapt to as a teacher for students who need kind of five minutes to themselves, how can I offer that to students virtually? I, I love all these ideas. It's so important for us to, again, that whole child, we're going back to it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I love that what you just said there is, you know, when you notice something's going on in the room you do something about it, right? You, so, so you change what you're doing, you go in a different direction, you turn the fireplace on, you do some breathing, some mindfulness activities. I was just talking to somebody the other day and I said, one of the problems I have sometimes with SEL is it's just something we talk about, 
but then we don't actually put it into practice. We don't give students the opportunity to live it in the moment when they actually need it. Right. And so that's so cool that like you recognize it in your classroom and you're like, okay, we're going to take five minutes and just come back together here. So cool. Uh, I literally, I could talk on this for so long because this was also <laughs> in addition to a conversation we were just having in a private Facebook group, which I know you're a part of, uh, of teachers utilizing brain breaks and, you know, meditation moments for that same reason of students being able to choose that they need that outlet. And I love, I love this discussion. It does connect to our mastery chat because the entire chat was about supporting that whole child. So outside of the elements that we've already discussed, I guess you had far, we had a lot of other questions you asked. Was there any <laughs> others that you feel like you really, you know, got some great responses to? I think, you know, it was encouraging for me that second question talking about the pandemic and has that changed your view? Um, because I, I know it has changed some people's view, but it was encouraging to me to see a lot of people saying no. Like I've always known that the whole child was critical. I've always known that this work to support them in a complete way was was you know so huge. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just reminded me of that, right? It's you know it's put that in a new light or maybe reinforce that. And so that was encouraging to me because yeah. I, I, my fear is we're going to go back at some point, right? We we need to go back. I hope we go back. Right. But I don't want to go back and then forget you know, where we're at and, and, and what kids actually need. Um, I don't want us to be like, okay, now we're good. And then we can just move forward and pretend like that didn't happen. Because the reality is I, like, I know P Sloan said some really cool stuff tonight. She's one of our teach better speakers, uh, presenters. And she talked about equity. And I think we can't forget some of the lessons that we're learning right now in the middle of this crisis. And, and, you know, at some point we're going to be out of this crisis, but, but, you know, that, that, and I think it was maybe Victor uh, Tam, Principal Tam ton, tonight that said, um, you know, there's almost two pandemics, right? There's the, there's the equity piece that's out in the world that's been there for a long time and there's this coronavirus. And so we can't forget that second one when we go back. And so that was encouraging for me to see that so many people really do understand the need to focus on the whole child. Yeah. Absolutely. I, you know, I got in a side conversation with somebody on Twitter around about this topic where I was talking about how, yes, right off the bat, equity became the forefront of every conversation. And I feel like that has dwindled where people are focusing less on this concern because we've kind of settled a little bit. People are eager for the end of the year. They're eager for summer. And we got in this conversation around the fact that like, we can't get quieter just because it's not the hot topic to talk about anymore. It doesn't mean that the problem's solved. Right. And so that same mindset, like you said, needs to be carried into August where we've had, as educators, we've had a lot of like aha moments. We've had a lot of moments of deep, deep, deep reflection. How do we bring that back up in a healthy way in August where we can be reflective and proactive in addressing these needs rather than just like, forget them that, you know, like they happened a few, you know, a long time ago. Yeah, no. And I, I think it really goes back to having those, you know, open dialogues with our students and maybe even parents, right. I mean, to start back, you know, where's everybody at, um, you know, right now there's kind of a big push to do temperature check-ins, um, you know, through Google forms and things like that with students. And Jennifer, my wife brought up, you know, we almost need to do something like that. That's an academic one that kind of, you know, is the same type of idea. But, um, you know, how are you feeling about math? You know, I'm Mrs. Hewitt and I'm going to be teaching you math this year, but I need to know where you're at with math, not just your skills, yeah. but like, where's your comfort level? What have you been doing for the last six months? You know, like there's going to be students that walk in to your room next year, whether it's virtually or, or you know, in person. And you need to know kind of where they're at emotionally with the content. Does that make sense? A thousand percent. I just had a conversation with a student who was telling me I hadn't heard from her for the majority of remote learning. And so a lot of my check-ins with her were just, hey, like, are you alive? Are you doing well? <laughs> so like, very surface level, just trying to make sure that she was doing okay. And to be, she like completely, you know, unveiled to me that she had such high anxiety of, about math because she had taken so much time off. And she was reflecting on the fact she's like, and now I'm about to take two months off. She's like, 
I I'm going to fail next year. I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh no, 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 no. Now we need to like get you back in like this mindset right. that you work to build all year long. You're a strong math student. You persevered all year long, yeah. a few weeks off, a few months off, we can get you back. And so right. you're right that there's like an emotional need related to content just as much as anything else. Yeah. And I think, you know, what you bring up about her is kind of why I wanted to ask the question in terms of the grid method and teach further and those types of concepts, because we are going to have students that come in and how are we going to support this student, but then also challenge the student over here. Right. And, and I think, you know, when students can, you know, sort of take the ownership of their own learning and, and um, you know, we can sort of empower them to do that. I think that's really going to help us narrow those gaps that are going to be there. I mean, there's no doubt that, that, you know, there's going to be different students at different levels and, you know, we're going to have to navigate that from day one. We have to be pro uh, differentiators. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Hans, at the end of uh, the chat, which if you guys right now um, miss the chat and you want to go back to look at hashtag mastery chat and read everything through, you're going to get like the last question first on your feed and you have to scroll all the way down. So <laughs> The last question you had had people giving shout outs to people. And I always love when this is done at the end of chats, but I feel like it was done really purposefully. Will you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it wasn't just, you know, who do you like kind of thing. It was really like, who are your accountability partners? Mm -hmm. Who are those people that kind of keep you on track to focusing on the whole child? Mm -hmm. And that may not be your best friend. That may be, you know, somebody that you work closely with, or maybe that's across the country in your PLN. I mean, it could be really anybody that, you know, has some sort of um, ability to influence you to stay on track in focusing on the entire kid. And so for me, it was my wife. Um, and, and that seems like kind of an easy default, but we do work together, um, yeah. both at school and at home. And it's, I would say, 100% both of our passions. So, um, you know, she does a great job of, of keeping me on track when I, you know, kind of start losing it. Like, okay, I'm not, not getting through to this student. What do I need to do? She can kind of like, you know, help me refocus. And I think I do the same thing for her. So I think, you know, whoever those people are in your life, and hopefully you have several, you know, accountability partners. I think Brene Brown calls them her square squad. You know, if you've read that book, it's just those people that kind of like challenge us, but also support us and lift us up at the same time. Yeah. And I like how you said that like right then and there, it was the people who support you, but they challenge you too. And I think that balance is really, really essential where it's not just somebody who's always your cheerleader, but it's somebody who can also act as your coach. And I, I love seeing people tagging friends, but also people that were connected in their network. You know, I saw people that were, we're connecting with somebody that is across the hall. And then I also saw people who were tagging friends that, that just meet virtually on Twitter, mm -hmm. even mastery chat friends yeah. that they haven't actually met, but they are able to check in with each other and, you know, have that relationship. And it's something I very much admire about you and, and other members of the Teach Better team that I can know that it's a safe space to reflect and, and share concerns, but also that I'm going to be challenged and, and ensure that that what I'm doing is what's best for students. It's so important. And I think that that should be how school is, right? I mean, we should be building safe environments where people can have those difficult conversations and know that, you know, I'm not going to judge you, but let's have a, let's have a dialogue here. Let's, let's yeah. help each other because ultimately it's about helping kids, right? You're right. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Hans, you were fabulous host of Mastery Chat. I was so glad that we had Hansa Palooza between the book being released uh, at the end of last week, seeing pictures coming through, people receiving their books. That's I know fun. that um, Mastery Chat was a huge deal, and it's just it's been so fun to be able to celebrate this moment for you, but also this perfect time to start having conversations and reminding our teachers the importance of whole child education. And I just so appreciate you. And I, I very much like, I don't know if I've said this to you, but I'm so appreciative that you put this all in a book that people now get to take with them because that the book and the way that you wrote it is so much more than just great stories of Hans Apple, but truly like 
things I know people are going to go do that are going to drastically impact students' lives. That's cool, dude. That's cool. <laughs> it is cool. I'm excited. I really am. It's it's fun. It's fun to see the book out there and in people's hands. And I'm excited to see what people do with it. So it'll be neat. Yeah. I do want to mention <laughs> book is available on Amazon, right? They can yep. go grab it there. Yep. Also, when you grab it and you start reading, make sure you do uh, your review on the book. Uh, that will be important so people can keep finding the book as they continue to search for it on Amazon. And then will you talk about really quick the book study? Because I know there's a lot of people that are going to be getting the book. There's a lot of people that are going to be going to awardwinningculture.com to get those resources and continue to talk about this stuff. But the book study, the free book study is a huge yes. deal. Yeah, so we uh, set up a book study over on awardwinningculture.com and it's through Teachable. So you can actually go on there and interact and there's videos and questions and you know downloads and all kinds of cool stuff. And then uh, I dropped this last week and I'll drop it again here and hopefully nobody's watching this, but um, in case anybody's watching, we may do uh, a live book study as well. So I've had some people reaching out to me already that want to do something like that. So I think that could be really fun and powerful. So um, yeah, if you're interested in that, maybe hit me up and let me know that's something you'd be into. Uh, but yeah, awardwinningculture.com is where the free book study is. <laughs> That will be very exciting. Yes, you do need to do a live book study. I have an entire group of people that want that. People, we're doing it, but you have to do it. <laughs> Sounds fun. It's awesome. Well, um, I do want to give a special shout out before we end today. Um, I don't know if you saw my, I think you saw my Instagram story, but I have officially listened to all 12 episodes that are out of the award-winning culture podcast. If you're not listening to it, they're perfect, really quick, short little episodes. And you feel like I was describing it in my Instagram stories. I felt like you and Jen were with Maya, just like hanging out on my porch, just having a conversation because I was sitting outside on my porch listening to it uh, the other day. And I, I really need another episode to come out. So <laughs> Sunday. You got to wait till Sunday. <laughs> I, I'm I'm kind of going to go on strike. I need like five more out on Sunday. <laughs> I, I'll wait till Sunday. I'll be patient. But one episode a week isn't going to be enough it's for me. It's not going to be enough. <laughs> so if you guys could we'll work, work on it. Maybe we'll like it. like 20 episodes a week. It'd be great. <laughs> That'd be pretty busy. That's a lot of walks. <laughs> yeah, but there are quick little conversations. You guys you guys talk all the time. Yeah, they are. They are. They're fun. We have a good time with it. And I, I think, uh, yeah, it, it is. It's interesting. It's interesting, like, where we go with things, too. Like, you just never know. Like, um, yeah, it's just we're having a fun, a good time with it. And, you know, it's it's been a lot of it's been some interesting dialogues. There's, there's, I think this week you'll, it, you need to listen to this one. I think this one's a good one. So I do like it because honestly, I knew that I'd like the podcast. Obviously I really, I love you and Jen so much, but um, I have like, I just get so much out of it professionally as well. The discussions that just really connect with, and I, I just need to convince Jen Jennifer, I think to like butt dial me and just keep me. <laughs> and I'll, just, I'll just always be listening into your conversation. <laughs> it's not crazy. <laughs> I think you're pretty much hearing our conversations at this point. So it's all good. <laughs> all right. Well, Hans, thank you again just for everything that you do, especially the book, Mastery Chat, and everything else you do to support educators. We've had so many people uh, commenting, saying that they enjoyed the chat and plan to go back and continue reading, getting the book, and they're hungry for a live book study in addition yes. to the free one you That's already awesome. have. So thank you for all that you do. That's really fun. Thanks for having me. It's been a blast. <laughs> all right, guys. We'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>